Craigslist. We did not meet on Craigslist, but if you're a viewer and you met on Craigslist, that is perfectly fine and a great way to start a relationship. <laughs> so, um, we have a lot of new followers um, that have been coming over. We are almost at 100,000 subscribers, which... Good job, big mama. What a milestone that is. I remember, um, nobody remembers this, Mal's earlier videos. We used to go to Joanne's Fabrics, find the perfect back lay, and she would spend half the day <laughs> sitting up, half the day getting ready, or a quarter of the day getting ready, the other quarter filming and then editing. It was a 24-hour process. I did that over and over and over. So it's really cool to see uh, to see what <laughs> she's done and kind of build it to 100,000 people. So I'm, I'm a very proud husband and employee. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine like the day that we get, whenever you hit 100,000 subscribers, most of you probably know, you get that really amazing plaque from YouTube because they acknowledge you as a channel with 100,000 subscribers and I just am so grateful for every single person who has taken the time to press that subscribe button. Without every single one of those people, what are we? Not YouTubers. So, we get the same questions kind of over and over and we're really trying to, now that we've you know, we've kind of get the baby thing down. We've gotten moved into a new house. Now in 2019, we have a bunch of really amazing stuff happening. Um, and we want our content to go in the direction of, you know, being helpful to our viewers. And we want to answer your questions that you ask over and over and just stuff like that. So I was like, you know what? People keep on asking stories about our relationship and like how we met. And I started thinking of when the last time we did a vlog on this was, and it was maybe three years ago, like when we got engaged. So here we are telling you the story of how we met, and we're actually coming at you from Ford's room because you see how that story ended up. <laughs> yeah. Should you... I start it off? Okay, yeah. So I um, very randomly, and we kind of mentioned it before, I used to own a valet company here in Nashville for six years. Um, I folded the company, started working for Mal, what, about a year ago? Mm -hmm. um, so I don't do that anymore. I know we've gotten a lot of questions about that. I work full-time with Mal. We um, kind of agreed it's like if we could make a good team. And I wanted to work for Mal but actually bring value to what she does. So I learned how to edit, taught myself all that good stuff, how to film, do videos, SEO, YouTube. Um, and then I was somewhat knowledgeable with contracts and all that. And so luckily, Mal, as Mal grew, I was able to kind of step back from my role in the ballet company and then just eventually folded it up and came over with you full time. So she's a pretty good boss most of the time. I'm not for sure how this leads to the story of how we met, but... Oh, back to how we met. <laughs> I'm still listening. So... Wait, hang on. A side note on that because that's another question. A lot of people are always like, what do y'all do? <laughs> this... The world of an influencer is, and we, we've done videos up on this, is really a really incredible career. And we have everybody that watches and that likes and that follows and all that to um, thank for that. But like from views on YouTube to brand deals to certain affiliates, there are all kinds of ways to make this into a really great living. And it just, it's it's funny to me when people ask that question or they're like, how did you buy that? We we worked, we made the money and we bought it. Yeah, it's just very, like anyone else would buy that. You know, it's a very uh, it's a very fair question. Um, there are lots of revenue streams. You don't just get paid solely on your YouTube subscribers. We kind of see that a lot. How do you do this? You only got 50,000 subscribers. Well, if you kind of build your business um, like, like Mal's business. done and build it like a business, uh, you can really diversify yourself in different whatever that may be, affiliate links, products, um, YouTube is a very, very small percentage, would you say? Yeah, uh, we have a lot of different things going on. And it's um, it's an amazing career. And it's an amazing thing that's like been able to provide us the lifestyle that we're leading right now. And it's just, it's really cool. I always encourage anyone that's thinking about if you have a skill or if you love fashion or beauty, absolutely jump in head first it does take time and patience and like you said the days of joanne's fabric and the days of nobody really sees the struggling. years like mal was hustling and just 
absolutely running all over the place, taking <laughs> days and days. Nobody, you, for, and that goes with any business. A lot of people, you don't see what goes on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, you kind of see the... You see all the good stuff. Yeah, you see us going to Restoration so. Hardware and buying yeah. all this furniture. And he's like, how'd you buy that? Well, how'd you buy your furniture? <laughs> I remember no. Well, I, my I saved company, my money yeah. and I bought it. I did. Yeah. Not my mom and dad. <laughs> not like anybody outside of a circle, but w us. Yeah, I remember. Blows my mind. It was funny. I remember having my ballet company. I was like, oh yeah, you're in a ballet company, but nobody saw like at 3 a.m. when I had to go down to a restaurant, get cussed out by a customer because one of our guys oh, Lord, lost his keys. Things. Yeah, so it's uh, anybody that's kind of started their own thing or doing their own thing, they. Um, they know how much work it is and what goes on behind the scenes that nobody really sees. So now how we met. We say that to say this. Um, I, I randomly um, went to a little place called Fido because in the morning, all of my valets, when I first had my company in the very early stages, they wrote in the restaurant they were at, their hours, tips, all that good stuff. So I had to read that and, um, and put the numbers every two weeks. It was very old school caveman way of doing payroll but that's how I, um, how I did it starting off and uh, I went to Fido to do all that at Fido one morning. It's a coffee shop in Hillsboro Village. Yeah. You can visit it if you come shop. to Nashville. And so I walked right in the door and I looked up to my right and there was a little blonde girl with shorts that I would say they were not fingertip length. <laughs> Just sitting there enjoying her breakfast. <laughs> so I thought, well, I didn't sit right beside her like a creep. I just, And that's where I usually like sitting so you can see people going outside. Um, so I just, about three rows, just kind of made a little my workstation. Mm -hmm. So um, that was about six years ago. And I was just like floating through life, reading every self-help book and like making lists that I never finished during the day. Aimlessly trying to figure out like <laughs> what my next step was. I'd just done The Amazing Race and finished Miss America and like all this stuff. And I was like, what do I do now? I was a lost soul in Fido at 7.30 a.m. I was <laughs> not doing worksheets or anything like that. I was literally, who knows? Who knows why I was there, what I thought I was going to get accomplished that day. Because I can almost guarantee you the answer was nothing. <laughs> and I never had ever been to Fido before. Just I rarely decided went. to go there that yeah. one day. So we sat by each other. And I thought that I came after Kyle. Kyle seems to think that he... No, she was already there. Okay, whatever. Well, you were more... You were in a better state of mind than I was those days. So I'm going <laughs> to believe you. And... um it's so funny, like, because no one, I feel like, meets these ways. Everybody's set up or they meet online. Like, it's so random to meet randomly in a coffee shop when you sit beside each other. So, the way that we started interacting, though, it was so crazy. So, a girl came up to me that I knew who was Miss Tennessee the year after I did Miss America. Her name's Nicole. She walks up to me and she starts, like, talking to me. Is that what happened first? And I start having this conversation, just blah, 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 blah. And then, like, Kyle and I are just kind of, like, sitting there, not knowing each other. And then I sneezed. And he was like, bless you if that's a sneeze. And I was like, thank you. Because I wasn't quite sure what it was. I don't know what it was. Who knows if it was a sneeze or a cough or what. But, um, and then we started talking about everything. We started talking about, like, our families and our jobs. And it was so random because I've only seen Kyle wear glasses once in the entire six plus years that I've known him. That was the day that he was wearing glasses. And he was I, writing with a pencil. Yeah, I like writing with pencils. And I couldn't read, like, the valet, all of our valets, including myself, and I'm the worst, had horrible handwriting. So I had to, like, look at this paper, and I couldn't read it from far away. So <laughs> I, look, I guess I looked very Clark Kent. Oh, he likes to make up a story about, like, what I thought of him in his head. <laughs> well, you obviously thought something good. Well, here, we, here we are in Ford's we room. <laughs> we were just like talking about our families and our jobs and all this random stuff. And my grandpa like made, made this whiskey or whatever. And I was talking to him about that. That was back in the days where I would talk about whiskey. I don't know why. I didn't really even drink whiskey. I don't drink now. But like back then, I did drink, but I didn't drink whiskey. So I don't know why I'm talking to him like I'm a whiskey connoisseur. I remember our first date. I took her to the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> and I love the Cheesecake Factory. I'm like burnt out on it now. And we got our cheesecake to go and we went to Centennial Park. Which is such an odd thing. We, we never do things like- I don't know if we've like... ever been back. 
and laid down a blanket, and she laid the biggest kiss on me. I did. <laughs> you did? No, I and didn't. This I was thought, not our first day. This was, no, that is not true. We had been <laughs> this, talk, you came to my house before that. This was not our first day. You're right, you're right. This was our first technical date. I did not kiss him on the first date. I didn't. Okay, you're right. We we because we we interacted, but this was like we felt comfortable with each other. We determined the other one was not like a serial killer or anything, and so we went out and had a nice little evening at the park. So bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> and then here we are. Six but you know what's later. so funny? I always think about things in life, and I always think about how one moment in your life can truly alter the trajectory of your existence on earth. And I always think about, what if I hadn't gone to Fido that morning? Like, what if I, what would my life be now? What would his life be now? Ford would not exist. Mm -hmm. And I just like, think of all of those things and think of like all of those tiny moments and the ones that like, change your life forever. And that was just a really special one for us. So a lot of people have been asking that, so we just wanted to come on here and just tell you guys that short little story again. We answered a couple more questions. So now that Ford is eating, they say anything that we are eating, he can eat. So any dinner that I make, I obviously am not adding tons of red pepper flakes and a bunch of spices, but I have to make sure that it's something that I feel like he will eat. So you guys know we like HelloFresh. We love having it on hand. And apparently these recipes um, are super great because they are kid tested and they're great for picky eaters, which is awesome because they have these family plan recipes and that makes everything super simple. Being able to make a meal that Ford will also eat. So that's just another aspect that I love besides so many things, just having things on hand is just amazing. I also love like being able to do a lot of these one pot meals. It's super easy to like clean up my kitchen. I have this all white kitchen that I like to keep super clean. It's also really convenient that they're easy to clean up, easy to cook, everything's pre-measured. Awesome. I haven't seen this recipe yet and I am excited. It's the Salsa Verde Enchiladas with Poblano Pepper, Black Beans, and Monterey Jack Cheese. I do love Mexican food. <laughs> So y'all know how I declutter literally like everything in my life and I either throw it away or give it away. I'm pretty sure that I gave away all of the pans, ooh, yum, all of the pans that will fit this recipe. So we might be making do. I really love cooking with poblano peppers. I also like stuffing these peppers with just breakfast sausage, a little bit of fennel seed, um, low fat cream cheese and Parmesan. What the heck is this for? I think this is a rogue pepper. Anyways. So I have added in the poblanos, the scallions, ooh, tomatoes, Southwest seasoning, half of the beans, and um, yeah, so I'm cooking that down. Now I'm about to add the other can of beans to this pot that has a little bit of olive oil. So if you don't know how to make refried beans, this is how you make, or this is how I've always made refried beans. It's very similar. So basically you're just gonna put those beans in there. You're gonna let them cook down a little bit. You're gonna mash them just like you'd mash potatoes or anything else you're gonna mash. Season with salt and pepper. And I always add a little bit of butter and this recipe also calls for a little bit of butter. I just love HelloFresh too because it's become part of our routine where cooking, cooking is always something that I want to do. But at the end of a really long day, it is a little bit harder to go to the fridge and like cook something just out of nowhere. So this just um, makes it easy on those tough days like that. So this is almost done. I'm actually gonna turn this down. I love these appliances, by the way. A lot of people think that some of these subscription meals are expensive. They are not. It's actually um, super affordable. And while well, I'm opening these beans, um, I will tell you exactly how affordable. It is now from $6.99 per serving, which makes it America's number one meal kit. I'm adding in a few tablespoons of this and then I'm gonna add in the beans next. 
Okay, I'm now gonna roll these tortillas. So, I always try and use a pan. It calls for eight by 11. Um, always use a pan that your enchiladas, or if you're making anything like this that's like a rolled thing with a filling, make sure that it's gonna touch all edges because if there's space in the pan, it kind of flattens out and all of that goodness that's supposed to be on the top kind of goes to the side, which you can always scrape it back onto the top, but if you wanna be civilized. And I'm gonna spread that on the tortilla and then I'll put that filling of the poblano and the beans and the um, scallions and the tomato. I'll then roll it up, you put the seam side down, and then I'll make a little row. So here's what it looks like before it goes into the oven. Before it started crying, so I had to run upstairs. I'm throwing this in the oven for three to five minutes. You wanna wait until this kind of bubbles over. And then I'm gonna make like a little sauce for on top while this is baking and it looks amazing. So while it was in the oven, I threw together this little sauce. It's sour cream, some Southwest seasoning, a little bit of hot water. Uh, and I'm actually gonna add a little bit of lime in it. But yeah, that was so easy. Um, and you guys know that we just love having, having HelloFresh as part of our, just like our go-to meals when we don't wanna have to think about anything else. So I highly recommend it if you're a busy mom like me or a busy business person or a busy just anything or, or even a not busy one if you're somebody that wants to learn how to cook. So I highly recommend HelloFresh to help kickstart your 2019 and you can get $80 off with this code that I'm gonna give you. It gives you eight free boxes in your first month. So just go to HelloFresh.com, enter Mallory Irvin 80 and get started. So I'm gonna go eat some enchiladas. And thanks so much for watching. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring and collaborating with us on this vlog. How is it? First bite. Mmm. Mmm. Do 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 do. I do 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 do. I do 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 do. It's a dangerous.